Chapter Four of the American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter Four. Forty One. Drawn Butter. Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour with a little cold water. Stir it till free from lumps, thin it, and stir it into half a pint of boiling water. Let it boil two or three minutes, then cut up about a quarter of a pound of butter into small pieces, and put it with the flour and water. Set it where it will melt gradually. If carefully mixed, it will be free from lumps. If not, strain it before it is put on the table. If the butter is to be eaten on fish, cut up several soft-boiled eggs into it. A little curry powder sprinkled into it will convert it into curry sauce. 42. Burnt Butter Put a couple of ounces of butter into a frying pan, set it on the fire. When of a dark brown colour, put in half a teacup full of vinegar, a little pepper and salt. This is nice for fish, salad or eggs. 43. Roast Meat Gravy Meat, when put down to roast, should have about a pint of water in the dripping pan. A little while before the meat is done, stir up the drippings, put it in a skillet, and set it where it will boil. Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour smoothly with a little water, and stir it in the gravy when it boils. Lamb and veal require a little butter in the gravy. The gravy for pork and geese should have a little of the dressing and sage mixed with it. If you wish to have your gravies look dark, scorch the flour that you thicken them with, which is easily done by putting it in a pan, setting it on a few coals, and stirring it constantly till it is a dark brown colour, taking care that it does not burn. Enough can be burnt at once to last a long time. 44. Sauce for cold meat, fish, or salad. Boil a couple of eggs three minutes, then mix it with a mustard spoonful of made mustard, a little salt, pepper, half a teacup of salad oil or melted butter, and half a teacup of vinegar. A tablespoonful of catsup improves it. 45. Wine sauce for venison or mutton. Warm half a pint of the drippings, or liquor the meat was boiled in. Mix a couple of teaspoons full of scorched flour with a little water, and stir it in when the gravy boils. Season it with salt, pepper, and cloves. Stir a tablespoonful of currant jelly in, and just before you take it from the fire, half a tumbler of wine. Many people prefer melted currant jelly to any other sauce for venison or mutton. 46. Rice Sauce Boil one onion and half a teacup of rice with a blade of mace till very soft, in just water enough to cover it. Then stir in half a pint of milk, a little salt, and strain it. This is a nice accompaniment to game. 47. Oyster Sauce Take the juice of the oysters, and to a pint put a couple of sticks of mace, a little salt and pepper. Set it on the fire. When it boils, stir in a couple of teaspoons full of flour mixed with milk. When it has boiled several minutes, stir in half a pint of oysters, a piece of butter of the size of a hen's egg. Let them scald through, then take them up. 48. White Celery Sauce for Boiled Poultry Take five or six heads of celery, cut off the green tops, cut up the remainder into small bits, and boil it till tender in half a pint of water. Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour smoothly with a little milk, then add half a teacup more of milk, stir it in, add a small lump of butter and a little salt. When it boils, take it up. 49. Brown Sauce for Poultry Peel two or three onions, cut them in slices, flour and fry them brown in a little butter, then sprinkle in a little flour, pepper, salt and sage. Add half a pint of the liquor the poultry was boiled in, and a tablespoonful of catsup. 
let it boil up, then stir in half a wine glass of wine, if you like. 50. Savoury Jelly for Cold Meat Boil lean beef or veal till tender. If you have any beef or veal bones, crack and boil them with the meat. They should be boiled longer than the meat, together with a little salt pork, sweet herbs, and pepper and salt. When boiled sufficiently, take it off, strain it, and let it remain till the next day. Then skim off the fat, take up the jelly, and scrape off the dregs that adhere to the bottom of it. Put in the whites and shells of several eggs, several blades of mace, a little wine and lemon juice, set it on the fire, stir it well till it boils, then strain it till clear through a jelly bag. 51. Liver Sauce for Fish Boil the liver of the fish, then mash it fine, stir it into drawn butter, put in a little cayenne or black pepper, a couple of teaspoonsful of lemon juice, and a tablespoonful of catsup. 52. Sauce for Lobsters Boil a couple of eggs three minutes. Mix them with the spawn of the lobster and a teaspoonful of water. When rubbed smooth, stir in a teaspoonful of mixed mustard, half a teacup of salad oil, or the same quantity of butter melted, a little salt, pepper, and five tablespoonsful of vinegar. 53. Chicken Salad Boil a chicken that weighs not more than a pound and a half. When very tender, take it up, cut it in small strips, and make the following sauce, and turn over it. Boil four eggs three minutes, then take them out of the shells, mash and mix them with a couple of tablespoons full of olive oil or melted butter, two-thirds of a tumbler of vinegar, a teaspoonful of mixed mustard, a teaspoonful of salt, a little pepper, and essence of celery if you have it. If not, it can be dispensed with. 54. Sauce for Turtle or Calf's Head To half a pint of hot melted butter or beef gravy, put the juice and grated rind of half a lemon, a little sage, basil or sweet marjoram, a little cayenne or black pepper, and salt. Add a wine glass of white wine just before you take it up. 55. Apple and cranberry sauce. Pare and quarter the apples. If not tart, stew them in cider. If tart enough, stew them in water. When stewed soft, put in a small piece of butter and sweeten it to the taste with sugar. Another way, which is very good, is to boil the apples without paring them with a few quinces and molasses in new cider till reduced to half the quantity. When cool, strain the sauce. This kind of sauce will keep good several months. It makes very good plain pies with the addition of a little cinnamon or cloves. To make cranberry sauce, nothing more is necessary than to stew the cranberries till soft, then stir in sugar and molasses to sweeten it. Let the sugar scald in it a few minutes. Strain it if you like. It is very good without straining. 56. Pudding Sauce Stir to a cream a teacup of butter with two of brown sugar, then add a wine glass of wine or cider. Flavour it with nutmeg, rose water, or essence of lemon. If you wish to have it liquid, heat two thirds of a pint of water boiling hot, mix two or three teaspoons full of flour with a little water, and stir it into the boiling water. As soon as it boils up well, stir it into the butter and sugar. 57. Tomato Soy Take ripe tomatoes and prick them with a fork. Lay them in a deep dish, and to each layer put a layer of salt. Let them remain in it four or five days, then take them out of the salt, and put them in vinegar and water for one night. Drain off the vinegar, and to each peck of tomatoes put half a pint of mustard seed, half an ounce of cloves, and the same quantity of pepper. The tomatoes should be put in a jar, with a layer of sliced onions to each layer of the tomatoes, and the spices sprinkled over each layer. In ten days they will be in good eating order. 58. 
Tomato Catsup To a gallon of ripe tomatoes, put four tablespoons full of salt, four of ground black pepper, three tablespoons full of ground mustard, half a tablespoonful of allspice, half a spoonful of cloves, six red peppers, ground fine. Simmer the whole slowly with a pint of vinegar three or four hours, then strain it through a sieve, bottle and cork it tight. The catsup should be made in a tin utensil, and the later in the season it is made, the less liable it will be to spoil. 59. Mushroom Catsup Put a layer of fresh mushrooms in a deep dish, sprinkle a little salt over them, then put in another layer of fresh mushrooms and salt, and so on till you get in all the mushrooms. Let them remain several days, then mash them fine, and to each quart put a tablespoonful of vinegar, half a teaspoonful of black pepper, and a quarter of a teaspoonful of cloves. Turn it into a stone jar, set the jar in a pot of boiling water, and let it boil two hours, then strain it without squeezing the mushrooms. Boil the juice a quarter of an hour, skim it well, let it stand a few hours to settle, then turn it off carefully through a sieve, bottle and cork it tight. Keep it in a cool place. 60. Walnut Catsup Procure the walnuts by the last of June. Keep them in salt and water for a week, then bruise them and turn boiling vinegar on them. Let them remain covered with vinegar for several days, stirring them up each day. Then boil them a quarter of an hour with a little more vinegar, strain it through a thick cloth, so that none of the coarse particles of the walnuts will go through. Season the vinegar highly with cloves, allspice, pepper, and salt. Boil the whole a few minutes, then bottle and cork it tight. Keep it in a cool place. 61. Curry Powder Mix an ounce of ginger, one of mustard, one of pepper, three of coriander seed, the same quantity of turmeric, a quarter of an ounce of cayenne pepper, half an ounce of cardamoms, and the same of cumin seed and cinnamon. Pound the whole fine, sift, and keep it in a bottle corked tight. 62. Essence of Celery Steep an ounce of celery seed in half a pint of brandy or vinegar. A few drops of this will give a fine flavour to soups and sauce for fowls. End of chapter 4